This mural series is a part of a community collaboration. It was a big struggle for me to find female artists to mentor with as I was growing and learning. And I know it's challenging to to be supported in the arts community, let alone Indigenous arts community, uh, which is a lot smaller. Usually how I approach the design is, first of all, I meet the people that I'm working with and I find out what it is that they'd like to see. And then I see how open they are to my designs. And then I look at the spaces. So I look at each of the walls. I kind of get an idea of scale and what that area is used for. Sometimes I'll go back to my house and I'll just kind of reflect on, okay, what is the feeling or the emotion or the teaching that I want to reflect in that space? What is it I want to present? Then I'll know. There was one really long wall. It was just a light beige wall and it was really long. And right away I was like, I could do a really big floral on that. <laughs> And they're like, we like the florals, but we just want it not as bright. So I took my cue from that, wrote toned down colors of floral because they already said yes to the floral. So I still get what I want and then they get what they want. So it's a win-win. And then for the opening area, it's like the main entrance for the residents. So I wanted that one to be bright and welcoming. And I wanted to have like a big symbol, probably one or two images. I knew that, I knew I wanted turquoise because that really bright, brightens up the room. And then I would just had to figure out what was that image. And that image came to me later. I went through like a whole bunch of my different designs and I was like, you know what? Everyone loves eagles. <laughs> and I was like, this is perfect. And it's like, you're gonna see this big eagle span when you walk into the, the open space, into the entryway, and it's gonna be like a hello. You know, it's like going to be a big greeting with the sun in it. And yeah, it's going to be welcoming people in the space and just like uplifting that area. Yeah. I knew I wanted to do something with nature because they have a molding in the middle of the wall and the upper part of the wall they wanted to have a mural on. And I knew I wanted something like calming and peaceful, but also something that speaks to the mountains and nature because you're, you're inside a building, but this area, once you walk outside the building, you, all around, you can just see the mountains and the sky. So I really wanted to bring some of the outside in, in, in a mountain form. So I didn't know if I wanted to do natural. So I did a bunch of sketches of different kind of landscapes. It would be really pretty to do that in like a geometric beadwork style. So like a lot of these triangle shapes and then there's beadwork designs in there. And I did that in shade, shades of blue to bring in the sky. Each laundry room has like a, a big window, but it's like a really high window. So when you look out it, you just see the sky and mountains, right? So I want to kind of reflect that and bring that commonality into it. This is um, for the entryway. So this is the turquoise background. There's the black outline. This is the red oxide that I use a lot. It's related to the red ochre, which is a traditional uh, pigment that we use in a lot of our regalia and also like in the pictograph and then yellow ochre and then titanium. And so this is the design of the eagle. It's just a sketch. I usually just do an outline sketch to kind of give them an idea of what it's going to look like overall. And this is what it came up for with the laundry room. So these are the these are the mountains, Belkameen Valley Mountains, and then there's bears in there. There's a lot of bears in those mountains. And then this one, I decided to do this, the blue color scheme. So it brings the sky into the mountains. So these are would be the, these are the sky colors, and then it goes into the darker shades here for the geometrics. My favorite. This one's a really big sketch because I did, it's a 60 foot long wall and it was just like no windows, no doors. And so I was like, I'm gonna make this the biggest floral ever. <laughs> and the building is called the Ambrosia Building. 
So ambrosia is an apple and it was created in this valley and it was like created from the bees. It was yeah, first discovered here in the 90s. So we're doing the ambrosia apple. So there's the apple right here. There's the buds right there. And then this end, this is the blossom. This is the apple blossom. So this would be the center. And then it goes out this long. Usually. So this is half, that's the center. And then I repeat it, repeat the design again this way. So it's a really, really long wall. I did the reds, but I did them toned down with this is that uh, the red ochre color that I like to use and then toned it down from there. And, and then these are the greens, a little bit darker green and then a light brighter green. So it tones it down from like the bright reds and oranges and yellows that I would usually use. But this is, it's kind of like a nicer transition in the building. It's all like beige, so it has like a nice transition through the space. I think to bring me in was both an opportunity, great opportunity for me, but also for them to be able to kind of share an Indigenous culture, but also I work with some other young women in the community. They're emerging artists, so I'm using these opportunities to bring in other emerging Indigenous artists and to teach them what I do and to share with them that process of creating the mural and how do we apply it to the wall and how do we complete the mural in a professional manner. I teach them about why I choose these images and what these images represent. And it's really cool because they they understand, like they already have it, the indigenous worldview. So they understand like the relationship between animals and plants and nature. And they also understand the design of florals because they do florals here. And they understand the, the design of geometric shapes. So one of them does beadwork, another one is a graphic artist, but they're both come from traditional background and upbringing. So there's, these designs are really common in our lifestyles. So there's a really good connection there. Um, and sharing it in that space, I think creates better relationships too with indigenous and non-indigenous people to share a story and also to create something beautiful in that space for them. It's a really good crew. We, we all get along really well. And we all kind of understand each other's art and they understand what my goal is when I'm painting these images. I always like really just put my intention to, to be positive and supportive to them throughout the process that they can have a really good experience while we're creating murals because that's one of the best parts of like working with a group of artists when you're muraling is having the collaborative part you know having each other share each other's visions or ideas but also just like the camaraderie and just working with each other and learning along the way. And then you find this sweet spot because the beginning is kind of like, you're just getting used to the new space. You're getting used to where the storage is and how we're going to go about our days and the planning. And then we get into a rhythm. Once we're in that rhythm, it's just smooth sailing. And we just, it's just us painting all day and enjoying that part of the process. At first, it's kind of surprising to the people that are, are living there, like, oh, what are you guys doing? Oh, we're just pa we're painting some murals for you guys. <laughs> and just greet them and just give them a little information so that they can process why we're there and what we're doing. We're not breaking into the building, creating murals and le illegally, <laughs> you know. We're creating murals and making the building beautiful for them. And we just, we, we're friendly and we greet them and people just um, do a daily check-in and see like how, how far we've come in our mural and they're like, oh, looking good today. And it's usually really positive feedback. And we're developing a relationship with the people that work there, really friendly and supportive as well. Um, we share the maintenance room with the maintenance guys. And so far they've been really gracious to us, <laughs> um, even though we've been messing up their room a bit. <laughs> yeah, it's been all around a really good experience. And, and it's also socializing us because it's a really small community. We're there to visit for a little while, make the space transformed into more of a welcoming space and also just be friendly to people that are there. We did do 
Uh, I'm urinal in the first floor laundry room and the second floor laundry room. And then the people on the third floor were like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> we're not getting our mural. And so I was like, I don't know. Well, this is in the contract. And then they were like, well, we're going to ask about this. <laughs> and then it was kind of funny because I heard one of the older gentlemen, she, he's like um, asking, he's like, why are you guys ostracizing us? And we're not getting a mural. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's so cute. He's like fighting for us. And they're like, no, no, we're going to get a mural on the third floor too. So they got us actually the people that live in that building got us a, another job for the third floor <laughs> which i thought was really cute huh? i was like thanks for getting us another job yeah, you guys got some talent oh, thank you. It's like, like do you guys have measurements that you like go off of we made a giant spritz oh gotcha yeah. oh okay which is like uh and you kind of make the lines it's a mirror image basically gotcha um, so we just made a half a stencil for the whole wall and then just flipped it, taped it down and cool. there's little notches in it. Well, good work. Thank you. community collaboration. The Canadian Women's Foundation funding prioritizes inclusion and addressing barriers to access for women, girls, two-spirit, trans, and non-binary people who face multiple challenges in recognition of the long histories and ongoing effects of colonization, racism, violence, and exclusion. Lower Similkameen Community Services Society is a nonprofit organization bringing programs, services, and opportunities to people in the community of the Similkameen Valley. Sharifa is an Anishinaabe artist from the Mississaugas of Skook Island, First Nation, Ontario. Since early childhood, Sharifa has been directed toward a life of art and culture. She draws on her Ojibwe roots and knowledge of woodland art to create unique works that include everything from acrylic painting to beadwork, engraving, and murals. <laughs>